An update now on the Michigan State University mass shooting. Investigators are revealing what they found inside a note from the MSU shooter Anthony McCray and a possible motive. We're also learning more about some interactions he had with police. CBS News Detroit's Andres Gutierrez joins us live in Lansing outside the house where McCray lived with his father. A lot of new details came out today, Andres. Absolutely, Shane. Investigators are now vetting a possible motive they found in that note. They say it contained the thoughts of a man angry at the world who rarely left his bedroom here. His father didn't believe that he had any friends, let alone 20 of them, that would, would help him put this out. Although Anthony McRae wanted people to believe several others were involved in Monday's massacre at Michigan State University, police confirmed the 43-year-old acted alone. Following up on a tip that night, two Lansing police officers spotted him walking home. They exited their vehicle, ordered him to put his show his hands. Uh, however, he produced a weapon and then uh, killed himself. On him, they found a two page handwritten note in which police say he felt slighted at the world, making threats against a church, schools in Ewing, New Jersey, where he lived several years ago, and his former workplace. Through our investigation, we found that he had had contact with some of those places. Um, I, he was an employee of the Meyer Warehouse at one time uh, and a couple of other businesses. It appears that he'd had some issues with the employees there where he was asked to leave. McCray was carrying dozens of rounds of ammo and two handguns, which weren't registered but purchased legally. After the former Ingham County prosecutor agreed to give him a plea deal in 2019 for a weapons charge that knocked it down from a felony to a misdemeanor. We would all hope that the a prosecutor would, would uh, uphold the, the law as it's written. But in a statement, the former prosecutor denied ever having a direct connection to the case, writing in part, the vast majority of cases are resolved by pleas, so that in and of itself is not noteworthy or exceptional. Going on to say, even those barred from legally possessing a firearm can sadly readily obtain one or more illegally. Investigators are now examining a cell phone and journals they collected at McRae's home to learn the why behind this heinous act. That's the, the question on all of our minds, um, and we're working our best to, to try to determine that as best as possible. Now, the university has said that McRae had no ties to MSU. However, investigators are looking into a claim that he may have applied for a job but was turned down. Reporting live in Lansing, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. So, Andres, besides the weapon charge you mentioned in 2019, had he ever had any other encounters with police? Yeah, the Lansing police chief went over his criminal history and they said that officers did uh, question him back in 2005 for a larceny. Then the following year, they pulled him over for a traffic violation, as was the case twice in 2007. All right, Andres Gutierrez live tonight in Lansing. Andres, thank you. More funeral arrangements have been shared by one of the victim's families. The family of Alexandria Werner, the 20-year-old junior from Clawson, will hold a visitation tomorrow from 4 to 9 p.m. at the Guardian Angels Church in Clawson. Her funeral service will be at 11 a.m. on Saturday at the same church. Services for Brendan Fraser were announced earlier this week. His viewing is tomorrow from 3 to 8 at Verheiden Funeral Home in Gross Point Park. His funeral is set for Saturday at St. Paul on the Lake Catholic Church. Services for Ariel Anderson have not yet been announced. At a news conference today, MSU officials, along with law enforcement, said they would not name the five students who were wounded and are currently being treated at Sparrow Hospital. However, they did share that one of those students is now in stable condition. The other four are still critical. And while their names have not been released, we've learned two of the shooting victims are from China. The U.S. ambassador to China tweeted late last night confirming that. Ambassador Nicholas Burns tweeted, quote, All of us across U.S. Mission China extend our condolences and prayers for the tragic loss of three American students at Michigan State University. Our thoughts are also with the five wounded students, including two students from China.